Hello everybody. It is presently 12.38 a.m. Saturday, June 30th, 2018, as I am recording this. Uh, I'm going to try and do a live stream, a very brief live stream in a couple minutes, but before I get along with that, the whole reason we're doing this, we're going to play a little Atari Vault, which is a compilation of Atari 2600 and arcade titles that you could get on Steam for about 10 15 bucks. I don't recall the actual price, but one of those amounts, I think it was 10 bucks. At least that's how much I paid for it. At least I don't know the actual, but you could get that on Steam for really, really cheap. And it comes packaged for free, included. It's the packing game for the, uh, the popular, the amazing Atari Box video computer system, the new Atari system from the current Atari brand owners who have nothing to do with the original Atari. Uh, that Atari is long dead. This is some other people who bought the name and tried to release tablets and game watches and, and none of that came to fruition. Maybe they'll have better luck with this one because they actually have money or something. And thus far, they have a grand total of 2,900,000. Let me refresh that because it's been a couple seconds and Yes, a grand total. They have collected, amassed, acquired, whatever the case may be, a grand total of 2,976,954 US dollars raised by 11,293 backers. We're two hours away from the campaign coming to a close. And uh, I'll add a little addendum towards the end of this video uh, you know, where I record the last bit. And I'll add that bit to see how much it accumulated. I'm thinking it'll break 3 million by the time this campaign ends. And if it doesn't, well, then I could say Atari proved me wrong because they couldn't reach 3 million. Mind you, I've uh, they've proven me wrong already because I figured the first day it made $2 million on its first day. And I figured, eh, it'll probably take them a week to get 3 million. And, uh, Turns out it took them a month, so they've proven me wrong because my standards apparently were way too high. Uh, everybody thought this was going to be another Ouya, and turns out they didn't even make Ouya numbers. The Ouya made about 8.5 million, and it didn't have the advantage of having a classic nostalgic brand that people were nostalgic, nostalgic over. Because let's be honest, that's the only reason this thing has legs. But uh, in any event... Congratulations to whoever owns the current Atari friend. <laughs> they now have close to 3 million, maybe 3 million. And uh, let's see if they actually put out a product next year. And I will say this right now. Let's, get, let's just get this piece of business out of the way. If I see this thing in stores for sale at a Best Buy or Walmart or any retail store next year, and it's for sale and if there if there aren't any there or at least there's a piece of paper that says it's sold out which is probably even better that's when i could say this thing was a success now whether it's a short-term success or a long-term success or whatever the case may be it'll be a step above the ouya which i've never seen in stores well, maybe this thing will be different maybe it'll be a huge uh, sham and and maybe it'll never come to fruition who knows uh, this doesn't mean anything, you know, it just means there's a lot of interest. People were willing to part with their money to invest in this idea that may or may not happen. A lot can happen in a year, but, uh, nonetheless, let's just see what happens. And hopefully the people who forked over money for this thing gets a, a kick-ass console out of it. Uh, nothing they have, uh, shown or, or rather not shown thus far has convinced me of that but who knows maybe maybe they'll produce a kick-ass system in one way or another and uh i don't know we'll we'll see in that regard so uh that's 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 the pre-show uh ramble as it were very impromptu ramble and uh we're gonna see if this twitch thing works maybe it will maybe it won't and uh I don't know. We'll see. Let's let's play this thing out. I'm going to look at the little window. There's usually a delay. I see the little things on the back. 
Okay, they seem to be working. Allegedly, we're working. I, 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 I guess, I suppose, anyways. So, if you're joining the, uh, the Twitch thing, uh, hello. I'm gonna play Atari Vault now. Because... Atari Box is close, is close to two million dollars. Two, three million dollars, whatever it is, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really been paying attention, but that, there you go. Anyways. I play a little Atari Vault, because I figured why not. And, uh, I'm going to lower this thing, because I don't want to blow my ears out. The new headset. Um, I forgot what it was called. Something off of, uh, Amazon. The DS502 something gaming headset thing. And, uh, I've done a couple tests with this thing. It sounds alright, for the most part. I imagine I have to do a couple more tweaks with the setting, but for the most part, it's better than what I had before. At the very least, so hopefully uh, we'll do more of these on a regular basis and uh, the uh, audio portion as far as the uh, my uh, rambling uh, incoherency will actually sound somewhat clearer. I play real sports boxing because that's the only game that I have real any, any real uh, emotional nostalgia for. Yeah, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a little sick and tired of all these Atari flashbacks and all these Atari compilations. I get it. The Atari 2600 is a classic. Everybody is nostalgic for the Atari 2600 system. But Jesus Christ, Atari is not just the Atari 2600. Yeah. I love this game. I want to talk about, this was one of my games I had back in the day. You know, on my Atari 7800 Pro System. Which is the only Atari system that I have any semblance of nostalgia for. I think that was my first video game system was an Atari 7800. Tell you right off the bat. First games that I had for it were Galaga, Pole Position, because it came with the system, Joust, Xevious, and I think, uh, I think we had, uh, 7800, uh, I think it might have been F-18 Hornet. Strictly, uh, well, th well, we also had some Atari 2600 games on there, too. So if we want to go with the whole spectrum, it would have been Pole Position, Galaga, Joust, Xevious, and River Raid. Which is an Activision classic 2600 game that is not part of the Atari Vault. And uh, maybe if this Atari box thing goes very, very far. Because th this is what makes me sad about this whole... <laughs> I was expecting, when, when, when that first day, when the Atari box made two million dollars in its first day, I figured it was going to make OUYA numbers eventually, because if the OUYA made about 8.5 million back in the day, and it was a tiny little Android console that was a little open, it made, made similar promises to the Atari VCS, and it didn't have the benefit of a classic brand and some classic... Uh, properties to play with and it didn't have a tempest game as I, I, at least i don't think that thing made 8.5 million dollars but i figured it has the atari brand and uh it should probably make a hell of a lot more than that or close to those numbers at least for best case scenario it would make that many numbers so i had this video planned out that i never ended up making because there was no real there was really no point because i figured uh it broke two million on its first day. Let's think about stretch goals. Let's make up a whole bunch of stretch goals, which they never did. Those cheap bastards. They never made any stretch goals for that thing because I figured they broke three million dollars. They have to. They, let's say they broke three million dollars. Let's introduce paddle controllers and you can make some modern day paddle controllers. So you have that nice precise control. Apparently, the joystick that they have rotates, which and, but it's not the same thing. And quite honestly, I don't like playing an analog stick with 
you know, when it comes to games like Breakout or Warlords or anything that requires that precise control. Like a mouse works, but the mouse is no real replacement for a knob controller. And then $4 million, they could have made like a trackball. $5 million, they could have combined the two and turned it into like an all-purpose X arcade, one of those X arcade pad things. And then $8 million, they could remake E.T. for the 2600, turn that into a full-fledged game that plays well. Because, you know, the E.T. license has to cost quite a bit of money. And then $10 million, you could re remake Kasumi Ninja. Then $20 million, you could make whatever. So just this is really, really uh, jokey, jokey little video thing. Where it's sort of just... Uh, <laughs> Here's these stretch goals you could do and... and and there are also a couple ideas that I, 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 I would have suggested, you know, if they wanted to make this thing really worth a damn. But, uh, when I saw it only made, like, it's only making... It's, when I saw that it only reached 3 million now, I'm like, eh, it's not really worth it. Because I wanted to do a follow-up to that other Atari box video that I did last year. You know, that was before the camp the uh, the campaign was like postponed because of one key element or whatever it was. Uh presumably we had change of management or whatever the case may be. And uh oh, that's more than one. I thought this ended five round that's more than one round, okay, whatever. Anyways. Punchy, 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 punch, punch, punch. This game came out, I believe, in '87. There we go. Took me six rounds to flatten the guy out. That's sad. I used to be able to do that in about a couple of rounds. I guess it depends on the uh, jabron I'm playing as. Uh, fuck. How do I uh, reset? Game select. Oh shit. But one thing I kind of wish they did. Maybe I haven't really checked the options yet. Iron Fists, Lefty O'Leary. Did I already play Lefty O'Leary? Oh, who cares? Anyways. Uh, one thing I have to check the options if I could, you know. The one thing you could do with, like, Stella, for example. Or one of those unofficial emulators is that you can map out all the Atari uh, VCS switches to the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the controller. And then, you know, a flip of the button, you could actually switch the, the whole thing. Like, even even the official compilations, you could do stuff like that. Like, the uh, Activision Anthology, you know, you could play, you could use the triggers to, you know, to change the colors and play with the switches and that sort of thing. And I kind of wish they did something like that here. Or maybe they do. I'm going to check the, con the um, controls real fast. Uh, down. Down and, and fire. No, it does not do that. Ah, that's a bunch of bullshit. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I guess we could play something else. Uh. Yeah, 2600 Tempest. No. <laughs> I'm no good at Tempest when it's a proper version of it, like an arcade port or, or that version that's on PlayStation. So Tempest on the 2600, uh, it's an interesting curiosity, but not something I'd be actually enjoy playing or anything like that because it's just. Uh, Let's play some basic math. 
because uh, of course we are. Zero. Yay. I'm just having fun just <laughs> playing with the little sound effects. That's giving me, this is already giving me more enjoyment than, uh, what's his face? Uh, whatever, I don't care. I really don't give a shit. Anyways. Nine. Eighteen. Nine plus eighteen. Yep, uh, nine's ten. Uh -huh. So the nine never changes. Uh, okay. Ah, so the 9 does change into something else. It's just been giving me a shitload of 9s. Uh, nine. Table subtraction, table multiplication, table division, random addition, random subtraction, random multiplication, random division. Uh... <sighs> I should make a mental note. Let's do a. I don't know. I, I I have to go back and check if I did an actual video review of basic math. I should probably do that right now. Just 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 for just just for the uh, just for the loaves or something. I don't know. Um. Let's think of one right now. Actually, well, you know what? Let, let me just think of <laughs> Let me think of one right now. Okay, uh, this is basic math for the Atari 2600 can video computer system. It is a game where you, you, you solve math problems. And uh, that's pretty much it. Press up and down to, to choose your numbers. Sometime. Uh, what? Sometimes you get to choose your numbers. Sometimes you did. Actually, I don't even know why I'm thinking. <laughs> why am I thinking of, of, of something that I could just write out and then read off a screen or something? I, I, I can't do this fucking ad libbing stuff. Uh, this is exciting, by the way. Very exciting stuff is this. Um, Oh, so I can't have the extra zeros. Okay, you learn something new every day. Oh, let's wait, hold on. Okay, so it's got to be okay. Fine, whatever. You learn something new. Okay, you have it has to be in the right place at the right time. Naturally, of course. 
Anyways, that's 7 out of 10. Amazingly, it didn't... Okay, well, that's fine. Let's, let's do some more basic math. That's what people want to see on a uh, live show thing, I, I, I guess, I suppose. Or, or something. I don't know. Something. Uh, yes, that's exactly what people want. Yeah, that's my fault. There we go. Yeah, that's what people want to watch on, on, on a uh, Twitch stream right about now. Yeah, you got these people that's like playing these like high-end shooters and, and stuff like that. Just a short while ago, I saw somebody was like finishing off a Zelda game or something like that. We're playing. You're watching a, you're, you're watching a video where somebody's playing math. And that's 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 a load of fun. Uh, I don't know. It's relaxing. I could use relaxing right about now. Uh, yeah. Twelve and eight. Yay! Ten out of ten. That's always exciting. One o'clock. Two million nine hundred seventy thousand thousand ninety six US dollars. So, uh, this could very well break the, uh, 3 million mark, this, uh, Atari box campaign. Um, yeah, this is a, okay, so, um, okay, so I think this, the, uh, the, the, the live portion of the show is over. I just wanted to see if it worked, and apparently it does work. I've lost a couple frames here and there, but that that's okay. So, uh, stream's over. Goodbye on the stream part. All right, so we've stopped streaming. Yeah, we're offline. Now we get to the fun part. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, okay, so we played. Real sports boxing, basic math. Uh, breakout. Actually, no, I don't want to do breakout. No, we're not breakout. Fuck. Uh, options. Controls. Sensitivity right? Okay. Okay. So I'll play a little breakout. It's a little sensitive. Actually, that's a bit of a lie. It's way too fucking sensitive, but that's okay. That I am perfectly fine with. I have a super breakout for the Atari 2600, but I don't have vanilla breakout. And uh, why is this resetted? Presumably because I picked a uh, two-player Maybe it's just oh fuck. Okay. 
two, four, five, three, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four. There we go. Plain Jane, vanilla, one player, fucking break out. Boom. Riveting stuff. Sensitivity is way too off the chart. Because you see, kids, when you're not that good at a game, you blame the sensitivity of your analog control scheme. And that, that usually helps. Also, you may want to try not playing at 1 in the morning when you're already exhausted. Uh, it's been a long day. It's been a, fair, it's been a long day, actually. And then there's the huge Canada Day weekend, which is going to be a little bit of fun, I guess. Uh, anyways. And there's a whole heat wave that's going to hit. See, it takes me a couple of, uh, okay, we're, well, we're done. <laughs> I was going to say, it takes me a couple of lives to actually get a rhythm going, but I seem to have lost that rhythm now, because uh, that's really just like, that's really normal for any game that I play, actually. It's going to take me a couple tries to actually get a rhythm for something. Especially if I, I, especially if I haven't touched a game in a good while, or I haven't touched it for like the first time, actually. So after a while, you're one with the game, and uh, you start to get a little better. And then you still feel miserably, but that's okay. That's okay. Fairly simple, fairly stupidly. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I was gonna say it was a nice, simple, real, stupidly simple, relaxing game. And then you hit that one brick and it goes bloop. The collision's kind of shit, but that's okay. Just clear in my throat. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bam, 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 bam. Well, that was fun while it lasted. <laughs> I'm actually going to play it again, why not? So, we got this Atari box thing that you wonder if they're actually going to actually going to put that thing together and put it out next year. Because there is somewhat of a legitimate concern. Yeah, because they did have... There's this one video where, like, Stop, Drop, and, and, and whoever actually um, made a rather revealing video on, on, on Atari's failed attempts to get funding for other projects. Like, they tried to... They, at one point, they were going to, like, this is the current Atari that they got going, was uh, bought by Infograms, and then that that almost got bankrupt, and now it's like Atari SA or something like that, and then, like, the, the ownership is kind of, like, 
ridiculous. Just like this game. It's a lousy game that I'm playing here, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm not concerned with trying to play a good game, just 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 sort of. My mind's drifting, so I'm just gonna do this whole thing. Where I just move my hand back and forth ever so slightly. And uh bounce the thing. And uh really not think about the game in general. I just want something fairly simple where I don't have to react too much. So we got this Atari this Atari Corporation, this Atari SA group that wanted wanted to put out like Chinese tablets with Atari branding that never went anywhere. And then there was that Atari game band thing which apparently they disassociated themselves with and never really told anybody and nobody knows what's happening with that. And then there was that attempt to get funding for to port a roller coaster tycoon over to the Switch. And uh, that didn't go anywhere. And I, honestly, I thought that was a stupid idea. And I guess... <laughs> Because, uh, like, here's my thinking, and this is probably not the best play to the best place to be sort of like bring this up, but you know, you know what? I figured why not. You, you, you're getting this Atari thing out, and people are wondering what games are you gonna have on this thing because this thing needs games, you can't just be playing like old Atari games. And, I've heard people say that, well, you can play games on Steam because it's a Linux box. You can play, there's 500, there's 5,000 games of Linux and off the Steam. And how many of those Steam games are actually going to be good? Because, and I'm not saying that to be like dismissive or anything like that, but, but you really think about it. The time when Steam with this was apparently this wonderful thing where you had like a bunch of games on there, a bunch of quality games, and then somewhere along the, somewhere along the way, uh, they opened themselves up to have like a bunch of shit games. And then really you got to ask yourself, how many of those shit games do you actually want on your new Atari box piece of machinery? Which is why, I, mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know, like I said, we'll see if they actually, you know, we'll see what they come up with. You know, now that they got the money. And, uh, we'll see, uh, if they end up, uh, yeah. I had something going there, but, uh, was not meant to be. That's okay. Now I get to pick up the uh, happy Xbox controller and its horrible D-pad. I'm using the Xbox One controller, which the D-pad on this thing isn't all that fantastic. But it's what I'm using, so I figured why not. You know, because I, because I just plug in a USB cable to, to one end and, and, you know, hook it up to my USB hub and, and, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, receivers and things like that. So I'm using a wire for this wireless controller. I don't have to waste flipping. We're not really concerned about that because we're going to play another another breakout game. Now we're going to go with Super Breakout. And the gameplay and more annoying sound effects, actually. But, in any event. Ding. Ding. This is the game I got. This is a game that, on a good day, I could play a half-decent game. This is probably not going to be a good a good day, so it's, this is going to be a pretty lousy game. I'm certain of it, but you know what? That's okay. Fairly resilient. I don't mind playing a lousy game of Super Breakout because that's usually 
you play a really good game of Super Breakout, and the ball starts to bounce really, really fast, and then you have to move really, really fast, and I really don't want to move very... <laughs> this has to be the least exciting uh, session of uh, play ever conceived, because I'm purposely taking games that aren't very taxing. Uh, playing real sports boxing, where all you do is mash a uh, button to flatten another boxer. It's probably because probably of difficulty switches on the easy side, but I, I, I don't know, whatever. I play real sports boxing on the actual Atari system, because I actually have that game. And uh, whatever setting I have there, that's what I stick with. And I don't play with the settings here all that much. You know, unless it's control, that's the only that's the only real setting I play with. So if it's on the easy side, and then so be it. There, I really don't care. I just want to play some games and, and just have a grand old time doing it. And this is where it gets uh, a little nuts. I tell you what, bro. Tell you what, though. My hand's a little fidgety, too. Mm -hmm. Bam. So, Changes the sound effects for every game. So, like I said before, in the first, my only real Atari system was an Atari 7800 Pro system. I was one of the few kids back in the day that actually had one. That was probably, I don't think it was the first video game system that I was exposed to. Or maybe it was. I know before then I had like, like uh, one of those Coleco arcade uh, uh, LED games. I think it was Pac. It was a Pac-Man one. It was those games. It was those tabletop games that looked like an arcade cabinet, but uh, it was more like an LED game. It made a lot of no irritating sounds. And that was probably the first time that I actually had like a video game system, the closest thing to a, an, ele an electronic game, so to speak. And then the only other system that we had was, you know, my brother had his, uh, this Commodore VIC-20 uh, computer. Which, uh, we never had any games for that thing, but uh, the wonderful thing about the VIC-20 was that it came with BASIC. So you could write your own little programs and stuff like that. My brother used to write this little, you know, this little text game. It was just sort of like a Starship Simulator. So you were, you, were, you were flying like an Enterprise, and you were fighting a Romulan ship, or, wait, or maybe it was a Ferengi, because it was based on TNG. This would have been like 87. They still, yes, they still sold the Commodore VIC-20s in like 86, 87. So that was, this, that was the computer that we had with for a good long while. And then you know, I got an Atari 7800. And uh, a couple other kids that I know, a couple, uh, actually one of my cousins actually had a 7800 too. And he had a few good games on there too, and a couple not so good games. But, uh, that was like, like what my ro really, my biggest exposure to Atari was that Atari 7800. And the thing with the 7800 was that it was backwards compatible with a lot of the 2600 games. So not only did you get, you know, did I, not only did I get to play, Stuff like Pole Position 2 and Galaga and Joust and Xevious. And, and even shit like uh, Karateka. Which was like a classic game, but on the 7800 it was god-awful. And also, I also got to enjoy games like River Raid and Real Sports Boxing and Tron Deadly Discs. Enduro. Very annoying sound. 
Sounds like a jackpot, but I'm not winning any money here. But I imagine that that's what that that's what that's what it sounds like at Atari headquarters now. You just loop that 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 ringing sound, and completely okay, whiffed it. And yeah. That's what it sounds like at Atari read about now. They're cashing in all that money. The fucking Atari box. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, one nineteen a.m. Let's let's see how much they got left to go. Two hours left, theoretically. Uh. Two million nine hundred seventy-eight thousand two hundred ninety-three. They may actually break the three million mark. So uh, if that happens, then good for them. They could make those paddle controllers that I have in my stretch goal list that they're never really come get to get it around. Like the 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 one concern I have with it, this Atari box thing. It really, it's not just the Atari. It's even. There's nothing on the console market, and I, I and I'm only look. I'm only talking for myself. I'm not talking for anybody else. If if you wanted to get this thing and you actually forked over the money for it, you know, I hope you get a kick-ass system and all that. All right. I'm not talking about you know why this isn't interesting to other people. I'm just you know I'm speaking for myself. I'm just speaking for myself. Video checkers, video chess. Should we play this? So I can make one move, and then the computer could take up to eight hours to make a move, apparently, because it needs that much time to think. You know, and if a computer needs that much time to think, you have to question how smart that computer really is. But I don't know. Uh, bowling, brain games, breakout, casino bomber, centipede. Circus of Art, Code Breaker, Combat. Combat 2. Isn't Combat 2 is like a homebrew? Or a prototype that uh, never went anywhere? Uh, golf, Gravatar, Hangman. Home Run, it's like a baseball game, Maze Craze. Uh, See, okay, but uh, uh -huh. sprint tools. What was it? You know what? Oh. Sure. That was a wasted quarter, by the way. Oh, <laughs> well, there we go. And so, uh, Yar? Yar. Yeah, I should have been playing Yar's Revenge. But that's okay. God damn it. Alright. What I don't like. What I don't like about Breakout in general, like any of the Breakouts actually, is that the the ball appears at random places. It's it's the one thing where I think like a game like Arkanoid actually did it better, where um, the ball appears somewhere, or. No, something like Arkanoid, the ball is stuck on your paddle and then you launch it. You just press a button to launch it. 
in here it just appears at random because apparently uh, you're supposed to know where these things appear and uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's Super Breakout. Otherwise, mediocre game of Super Breakout being played here today. Yeah, that was a waste of a uh, quarter, by the way. If this were an actual arcade machine, but fortunately, uh, we are not that. Crystal Castles. Uh, you know what? Figured why not. Let's uh, go with Crystal Castles. That's a fun game. Crystal Castles. The first time I played Crystal Castles was actually on the original Atari flashback system. Original Atari flashback system. I actually did a video on that a long ass time ago. And uh, for those who don't know, it's not the same as the ones from App Games. Where apparently, like, the sound emulation is not up to par. The original flashback was more like an NES on a chip, so it wasn't even an emulator. It wasn't even like an emulator box, it was more like a you were porting the games from like the original 2600 and other oh, and by the way that was based on an Atari 7800 so you had a couple Atari 7800 games except not really because it's an, a, a Nintendo on a chip so it's like you know that was my fault so you had a Nintendo on a chip that was trying to replicate the gameplay of an Atari 2600, or rather an Atari 7800, since this was based on the Atari 7800 uh, system. I actually did a video on that ages ago. And uh, that was like the only other flashback unit I picked up. I recently picked up one of those, uh, I don't know if I ever showcased, showed it off in the, one of the pickups, probably not. There's some pickups that I buy that I don't show off in the videos right, because it's not worth it or anything like that but I actually bought one of those Atari flashback portables when it was on sale at Walmart I want to say last year or like a few months ago all the Atari stuff like the, 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 here's the funny thing about those flashback systems I think after the NES Classic Edition became a big deal, and the Super Nintendo Classic Edition became a big deal, and those things sold out quickly, and because Nintendo couldn't be bothered to make a whole lot of stock, uh, they went ahead and bought a shitload of these like other flashback systems, like Atari flashback systems, Sega Genesis flashback systems, and uh, oh, thank fuck. <laughs> One fear was I had trying to climb these stupid steps, and uh, I don't make it in time. So anyways, uh, you have all these Atari flashback systems that they sell out pretty quick quickly. It's like the Gold Edition. And then you have all these Sega Genesis flashback uh, systems. And you've got like dozens and... and uh, here it was, let me just rephrase, let me go back a step. So Nintendo puts out these NES and SNES Classic Editions. They produce very little stock, or, or they ship very little stock to these stores and they sell out quickly. And so stores like Walmart, they end up buying a whole bunch of these... Uh, I didn't want to pick up the hat. Fuck. Didn't want to pick up the hat. That was my fault. Anyways, they buy a whole bunch of these Sega Genesis flashback systems, and nobody's buying these things. 
A buddy of mine bought one of these. He didn't like it, so he ended up giving his to He gave me his Genesis flashback. I ended up giving him his my the uh, that super game SNES clone. The one that I showed off ages ago, the one that kills all your saved games. Uh Now, fuck and hell. The other day I was playing this, I played a much better, much better game, much more competent game. Today I'm just like, fuck. That, that piece of tree, you know, all these shit pickles, and I, I don't know how this is going to translate to the final render, but it is going to translate into something. Of course. I swear to god, the other day I was playing like an amazing game of Crystal Castles. I was going really, really far, and now I can't even be bothered to climb the fucking steps. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. Come on. Why can't I? It's a load of rubbish. To be fair though, it's a fun game. And Crystal Castles is actually pretty fun. Nice little Pac-Man clone if you want to go that far. And now we got the... Uh... The first time I'm playing the arcade version. You got the last gem, Bentley Bear. Yay. That's well, a fun game, though. Oh, okay. Well, that, that didn't last long. There we go. door here okay. shite okay, get on the platform got shit come on there you go got the last gem Wow. Hidden ramp level two. The box are a different color. Oh, this is kind of fun. I, I, I take back what I said. This is not fun. 
Oh, I got a high score at least. That's very reassuring. That's not so bad of a game, actually. That's kind of fun. Probably spend more time on it one of these days and actually, you know, give it a nice little play playthrough. And then I don't touch it for another two, three months. So that's usually how it goes. Get the gems, Bentley Bear. You see, this is nice that they have like the arcade versions. The arcade versions and the 2600 versions, because the 2600 versions are fun. You know, if you care for the 2600 versions. But when you have the arcade, but when you have the arcade version, it gives you a little more context as to what these things are supposed to be. So if you only have played like Crystal Castles and you don't have the manual for this thing, uh, it just ends up being a game where you're controlling a whole bunch of lines. And cannot get raped by the trees from the Evil Dead. Like that that's the best way you could visualize this game is uh not the dead so the Bentley Bear needs like a, a nice little uh little hat and you're dead. It looks almost graphic. Ah. Well, that's, that's never going to go anywhere. Nah. Mm -hmm. Catch gem eaters when they are eating. Okay, fair enough. What time is it? Uh, yeah, uh, so we're done. At least I'm done, actually. I'm gonna call it a night. Um, let's give it one last refresh. So at 1.36 a.m., campaign is at, you know what? It could very well hit. I am confident this is going to hit an hour left. 2,979,035 US dollars raised by 11,302 backers. So it may very well break the 3 million mark. And uh, the 3 million Atari box is the name of this show pretty much. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be a thing. Yeah, so that's going to do it for me. Nice hour of uh, random incoherent gameplay and uh, did a bit of a test on the uh, the old stream we'll see if, if that goes anywhere probably not going to go anywhere but that's okay anyways um, so I don't know when we'll do another one of these hopefully soon but uh, yeah anyways Anyways, I'll, if I remember, I'll uh, add an addendum to the um, Oh yeah, I can't be real, you just... Sorry about that, I just yawned. It's late, like I said. For some people, quote, you know, one thirty in the morning probably isn't doesn't seem like that to a lot of people, but for me, especially... Uh, but this it's really really warm out and I do want to start you know turning on the fan and I don't want to the, the one thing is it's like it catches the fan in the background because it's one of those anyways whatever anyways so that's the show everybody uh, yeah that's all I got anyways so, uh, thanks for watching Thanks for uh, sticking around, I guess, and uh, until next time, take care. Good night.
and uh, yeah.